ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار ثم اما بعد اكبت praising glorifying and exalting Allah tbarak wa ta'ala the only one worthy of our worship our praise our glorification i send salutations of prayers and peace upon the finality of prophets and messengers muhammad ibn abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam upon his family his companions and all who follow him in righteousness until the day of judgment indeed beloved brothers and sisters the best speech is the book of allah jalla wa ala the quran and the best guidance is the guidance of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the worst of affairs are newly invented matters in terms of creed and worship as every newly invented matter is something that leads humanity astray and we ask allah jalla wa ala on this auspicious day of yawmul jumu'ah to protect us from ever going astray and to keep us upon sirat al mustaqim amin beloved brothers and sisters today we want to address you inshallah ta'ala regarding the deception of shaitan the tools that shaitan uses to deceive bani adam and the greatest of those tools is the deception of shaitan cannot deceive me thinking that i am good and i'm okay I have memorized Quran, I'm hafiz, I practice the deen, I wake up for fajr, masha Allah, he has no power against me can be the first and very tool that shaitan uses as we'll come to see. Ibn Qayyim al-Jawziyya rahimahullah ta'ala he says regarding the plots of shaitan he says one of the plots of shaitan is to make attractive to the mind that which will in really harm it he says until the person begins to think that that thing that they are thinking of is actually beneficial for them and he puts off doing that which is actually most beneficial from those things and that which is most beneficial for that person until he thinks that which is really a benefit is actually a harm So what Ibn Qayyim is saying is that at times as human beings I may think that this action that I'm involving myself in has benefits but that is a deception from shaitan and the reality is that it may not have no benefit whatsoever 
and the thing that actually has benefit, we begin to pull ourselves away from. We put that thing farther away from ourselves. And he says, how often has he prevented a person from accepting Islam? How often has shaitan prevented a person from developing and working on their spirituality, on their faith? How often has shaitan kept a person from reaching a state of ihsan? As we know in that famous hadith of Jibreel, we learn about what is Islam, what is Iman, and what is Ihsan, showing us that there are darajats in the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. There are levels. He also says that how often has shaitan presented falsehood in the most beautiful image and distorted it from the truth and makes the truth appear ugly and detested and spoils the image of the truth? And how often has he cheated those who have knowledge and passed off counterfeit thoughts in their mind, even though they should know better? He says he misleads them in all kinds of ways and throws them into one path of destruction after another. He says he made them worship idols. He made them break the ties of kinship. He's made them commis commit incest and adultery. He has made them make these sins attractive to them. And he promises them paradise in spite of their disbelief and their disobedience to their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we see that in these days and times that is still the truth. How many of us have broken ties of kin with our family? For whatever reason, and Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala orders us to hold on to those ties. How many Muslims, married and non-married, have fornicated and committed adultery? How many scholars and imams have been led astray? And the number are in the many. And he says that shaitan causes them to give up in joining the good. Do you hear me? Shaitan causes them to give up in joining the good and forbidding the evil on the grounds of being nice to people and on the grounds of assimilating with the people. Meaning, me and you, there is no difference between us. We are all from the children of Abraham. Inshallah, you can do what you do and I support you because of equality. And the reality is that that is a deception of shaitan. And he says he makes them turn away from that which the messenger has brought on the grounds of following those who are being led astray. And he causes the hypocrites to compromise in the religion of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. He causes the hypocrites to compromise in their faith on the basis of knowing how to deal with the people better, or I need to make a living and make money for my family. And subhanahu rabbil alim, this statement cannot be any truer. In these days and times, when we are afflicted with homosexuality, when we are afflicted with LGBTQ+, what we are afflicted with transgenderism that is affecting not only the non-Muslims, but also the Muslim community. That we have among those individuals of weak faith. That we have from among those individuals who want to assimilate. That we have from those individuals who want to compromise their deen out of making people feel okay and happy that they say there's nothing wrong with it. We'll march alongside with you for the sake of equality because we should all have equality on the earth. Yes, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if you have no shame, then do as you wish. But the deen of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala is not to be compromised with. We don't accept 
homosexuality. We don't accept transgenderism. We don't accept LGBTQ, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever letters that they want to take. We don't accept taking words that have good meanings as shaitan makes them apparent that way and turning them into things that have evil meanings as pride, as gay. Gay means happy. Pride means that I'm proud. Taking the rainbow and now when you see your children, you don't even want them playing with colors anymore because they take what's good and they turn it into evil and facade. But the people struggle absolutely. We're not saying go out and mock people. We're not saying go out and harm people. We're not saying go out and say evil things for two people. Lakum dinakum waliyadin to you be your way and to be me and to me be mine. But don't come to our faith. Don't come to our religion and begin to try to change our faith or get us to change the ways because that is a plot from shaitan. There is no compromising when it comes to the kitab and the sunnah. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is the legislator and him alone. And he says, it was in these same ways that shaitan deceived our father Adam when he came to Adam and he made the tree attractive to Adam. The tree that Allah says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا هَذِهِ الشَّجَرَةِ Allah said, don't approach the tree. Was there something wrong with the tree? Was the tree in its essence haram? Was the fruit that the tree produces haram? لا. Allah says, لا تقربوا. I gave you an order. And for you is سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا We submit and we obey. And we don't question Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala regarding those things. But shaitan, he comes and he says, Ya Adam, I'm a sincere advisor. I want good for you, Adam. If you eat from this tree, wallahi, it is the tree of life. It is the tree of eternity. And he made attractive to Adam, alayhi salam, that sin of disobedience, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Adam and Hawa approached the tree. He goes on to say that shaitan today uses the same tactics, the same plots to mislead people. He makes them call women to come out clothed but naked. And this hadith is an authentic hadith narrated from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, my beloved sisters. And clothed but naked means you have clothing on, but as the scholars say, I can see every curvature of your body and it's almost as if you had nothing on. The spandex, the tight shirts, all of these things that show the complete form of the body have been prohibited in Islam. There's no compromising in faith. Maybe I'm struggling in my Iman and that's okay. I turn to Allah day in and day out. I make istighfar, I make tawbah. And I ask Allah to guide me, I ask Him to protect my heart. That is baynak wa bayna Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is between you and Allah. But the haq is the haq. The truth is the truth. The Messenger of Allah said, we'll come to this point where he declared it to be a sign of the hour that the women will be naked but clothed. And he says that he makes it seem that religion is backwards. That religion stagnates the human being. That this religion of Islam is something for the days of old. It has nothing to do with the year 2022. Don't you see how we have become a modern people? We have modernized the world. And Allah that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala makes us from among these individuals who believe that Islam is not relevant today. That 
is in itself another plot of shaitan. I remember what Allah says in 1663. Subhanallah. May Allah protect us. He says, by Allah, we have surely sent messengers to communities before you, O Prophet. But shaitan made their misdeeds appealing to them. So he is their companion today, and they will suffer a painful punishment. We have a Volkswagen with the license plates TKE 2914 outside that needs to be moved, inshallah. Volkswagen, great. Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala, He also says, قُلْ حَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا أَلَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ سُنْعًا Subhanallah. He says, say, O Prophet, shall we inform you of those who will lose the most deeds? He says, there are those whose efforts are in vain in this worldly life while they think that they're doing good. SubhanAllah. There are those whose efforts, everything that you're putting forth, thinking I'm on it, I'm doing good. But the reality is that you have missed the mark. <coughs> you have deceived yourself. You have allowed shaitan to make appealing to you something that is not from the deen of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. And I have to say it. And some may get upset with me. And that's okay. But it's my responsibility as a leader in the community and as the imam to call to the truth whether you like it or don't like it. But also our brothers and sisters who are business owners and they sell the haram. It is not justified because you are living in the land of the kufar and the land of the disbelievers that we can sell them alcohol, that we can sell them paraphernalia, that we can sell them things to go ahead and get high, that we can sell them things for sex and drugs and everything else that we can sell them pork and swine. The Prophet وسلم, he says, the one who buys it, the one who sells it, the one who consumes it, the one who makes it available for people, all of them are sinning. Don't allow shaitan to trick you, to make you think, I need to take care of my family. Allah razak hu al ghani. He is rich. Who are you asking from? Are you asking from someone who's faqir? La! Your sustenance has been written for you, Allah says. The Prophet sallallahu says, when you were in the womb of your mother, Allah sent the angels to write, your rizq it has been written already. The length of time that you're going to live, whether you're going to be happy or wretched, all of these things have already been put in play. <coughs> you don't need the haram in your life. Wallahi, it is the biggest trick from shaitan of thinking I'm going to go poor if I don't sell these things to the people. Wallahi, Allah will give you more when you give up for Allah that which he has commanded you to give up. And again, that is between you and Allah. You know who you are. And Allah says in the Quran, and we have placed at their disposal evil associates who made their past and their future deeds, misdeeds, appealing to them. These actions that you think are good, he makes it appealing to you, when in fact, they're no good at all. There are actions that take people to the fire. As the Prophet Sallallahu said, regarding our store owners, you're feeding your family food of the fire. 
the wealth that you use to take care of your home. May Allah wa ta'ala protect us. And he says, Shaitan uses as a tactic changing the names of things. As he said to Adam, this is the tree of eternity. Alcohol becomes the mother of joy. Weed becomes the morsel of satisfaction. And we begin to even deceive ourselves even further, especially in today's day and time. I have anxiety. I'm depressed. I'm suffering. You know what? They say if you go and smoke weed, then I'll be okay. For our young brothers and sisters, stop capping. It's not the case. Wallahi tallahi wa billahi. You're deceiving yourself so that you can sin. Be real with yourself. Say, I'm a sinner. Ya Allah, I'm a sinner, Ya Allah, and I need your help. Because the reality is that nothing removes those things from your life except Allah wa ta'ala. Drugs aren't going to do it. You can lie to yourself all that you want. And wallahi tallahi wa billahi, it won't help you. You'll remain depressed. You'll remain with anxiety. You'll remain in pain because the pain, the shaitan put it in your head. You remain having all of these different things, insha'Allah ta'ala, that affect your life. And they won't change because the shaitan wants you to stay in that cycle of deception. But we have too many examples from the people of the past, wallahi. From the anbiya and the rusul. Ayyub is the best of those examples. No one went through pain like Ayyub. No one went through a challenge and a difficulty like Ayyub. Some of the scholars say 18 years of sickness. Free of marijuana. Free of alcohol. Free of drugs of any sort and any type. But he turned to the one who is a shafi The one who is the true healer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaitan, beloved brothers and sisters, he is an expert and he focuses on having or using different methods. And Ibn Qayyum he says, there is nothing that Allah has enjoined upon Bani Adam except that Shaitan has a way of dealing with it. SubhanAllah, he finds anguish. Either you're lazy, either you're negligent, even he finds an angle for the person who is extremely cautious of their deen. The lazy one, the negligent one, a bit easier. The one who says, I'm cautious, I'm watching out. Shaitan, he uses the path of innovation. You know what, you're not doing enough, you can do more. You know what, you can be better. And you begin to go into excess and exaggeration in the deed that wasn't found with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he causes them to deviate through those manners and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala to protect us وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين المبارك. He says in in conclusion in closing, his aim, Shaitan's aim, is to steer both categories of people astray by whatever means necessary. The other method of Shaitan is to make you think that you got time. I got time. The Shabab, I got time. My life, I'm still young. It's not time for salah, I got time. I don't have to do good now, I got time. And the reality, brothers and sisters, is that you may be completely out of time. The shot clock is already down to the seconds, and the reality is that that three-point shot, the dunk, is not going to happen. 
and you may not be that much of an expert to make it out at the last minute. Because as he says, it is in the last minute that Shaitan says to his companion, go and attack him now. Because we have very little time left. And if we don't get him now, then we'll lose him forever. And this is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, forget about when the hour is going to be established, but what have you done to prepare for the hour, meaning your death, the time will be, that will be your last moments. And remember that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالْخَوَاتِينَ Indeed, our actions will be judged by their final act. What will be your final act? Will it be you consuming the drugs, the alcohol? Will it be you selling them even in the quote-unquote halal manner in your mind? Will it be in the disobedience of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala? Or will you be from those who are able to leave this world with the kalima of tawheed, la ilaha illallah upon the tongue? And remember, they say that what the person does in his life that is continuous is how they're going to exit this life. The other day I was able to see a brother whose father is in the hospital and his father is in a coma. And his father, he's recording his father and all you see and hear from his father, lips moving is la ilaha illallah, astaghfirullah, subhanallah, allahu akbar. Meaning that this man, may Allah preserve him, forgive him and have mercy on him, must have been a person of dhikr in his life. Because in this last moment, he's still remembering Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala because that's what his life was about. Or will your life be, O oh Shabab, the last song that you loved and heard, the last action that you did, the thing that you are attached to, and when the people come to tell you to say, La ilaha illallah, habibi, habibti, what comes out of your mouth is the opposite. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala protect us from an evil end. May He grant us a good ending and ending with la ilaha illallah upon our tongues and within our hearts. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala allow us to leave the haram for the halal. May Allah make us from those who submit to him and are obedient. May Allah allow us to give up those things of our desires and trust in him and have yaqeen and certainty that he will provide for us, inshaAllah. May Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala heal our hearts. May he protect our hearts. May he cause us to be from those who are able to battle against the shaitan and win that battle and find him in love and pleasing with us, meaning Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and entering us into his paradise. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adab al-nar.